Hello and welcome back to the Will and Twine Fiber Studio Knitting Podcast. Um, it's been a while since we've last chatted and um, yeah, I'm sorry for my little bit of absence. Um, but the last couple of months were pretty, um, yeah, exciting months with a lot of new things and a lot of uh, work to be done behind the scenes because yeah, I've been also teasing you on Instagram a little bit um, about some exciting announcements that I'm gonna take or do. And that is that I'm actually uh, going to be a full-time natural yarn dyer from September on. I've quit um, my former day job um, and yeah, I'm gonna be full-time wool and wine from now on. So yeah. That is also why um, I was a little bit uh, yeah, absent because there were a lot of things to be figured out with all the going full-time stuff and um, yeah, you don't want to know how much admin work that meant for me. So <laughs> um, I'm happy that this is over now and I'm only in the last couple of things and last couple of um, yeah phases that I have to... Uh, organize things and um, then it's just dying yarn for me um, full time which is pretty exciting um, also I want to say a big thank you to all of you because um, yeah this is basically my dream job and I couldn't be able uh, to do it without your support so yeah thank you so much and um, I'm so happy to have you with me on my journey and yeah as a little uh, welcome back, I wanted to share a couple of uh, colorways with you that will be coming to the shop um, on the 1st of September, 8 p.m. GMT plus two. This is the next shop update date. And um, yeah, it has been a while, so I've prepared a lot of yarn. So it's going to be a really big one. And I have a few specials that I thought, why not share it in a video format with you so you can see the colors and how to pair them maybe. And um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this collection. I'm looking at it right now, it's right in front of me. So yeah, I'm pretty excited to share it all with you. Um, first of all, um, there is also going to be a pattern release this Friday by a friend of mine um, called Anja of Hekel Manufaktur and she is actually, she designed a cardigan called Fern and Moss um, in our BFM Massam DK base and um, that one is going to be released on Friday so a little bit before um, our shop update so if you fancy knitting that one um, you can yeah, buy the pattern, look at the pattern and um, see what yardage you might need right before the shop update. And then if you fancy knitting it maybe in the original colorway that Anya used for her sample, um, that's going to be available um, alongside some other very autumnal colorways. Um, Anya is also offering an, a coupon code, like an introductionary price with, I think if I remember correctly, like a 10% off uh, introduction price. And if I don't, if I remember it correctly, that one, uh, the coupon code is um, Hello Fern and Moss. Um, but I'm also going to link that down below so you can also check that one out again and um, yeah, the pattern is absolutely glorious. I'm pretty sure you saw it before. Um, it's an all over textured pattern with like a little bit of a um, like minimalistic leaf motif going all over and it's really really pretty um, and Anya knitted that one in my colorway Sage which is a pretty uh, coolish deep green um, that also shifts quite a lot in the light so it's um, yeah it really reminds me of uh, plants and yeah, it's really pretty and really greenery inspired. So <laughs> um, Yeah, definitely check it out. I will also link the pattern down below and if I manage to do so I would also love to insert some pictures, but as you know, I'm pretty new to this whole <laughs> Podcasting thing so it might be that I'm not able to do it, but yeah Let's see somehow I will show you the cardigan and the coupon code and everything um, 
I think for a medium to large size you would probably need like five skeins of the BFM Massim DK. But also, um, if you're unsure about it, um, always feel free to reach out to me. I will always uh, help you with um, yarn choice and stuff. If you're new to my bases, I've been knitting with these quite a lot and I'm also knitting with it right now, actually. Um, so if you need any help with, I don't know, any yardage, any color combinations or so, as always, feel free to reach out uh, to me via email or um, Instagram or whatever. I will also link all my contact data below so you can definitely see how to get in touch with me. Um, yeah, from Friday on the Fern and Moss cardigan will be available. So yeah, if you're unsure about um, like how much yarn you need or anything, yeah, I will be available all weekend to answer all your questions before the update and also I will share another um, color preview of the yarn. Um, right before the update, probably on Instagram. I don't think I will be able to include all colorways in a newsletter because that would be <laughs> way too long. Um, but yeah, you can always replay this video or you can also um, find the color preview on Instagram, probably in some stories of mine. Um, yeah, so let's jump right in and show the colorways. I will start with the BFM Massim DK, which is um, my standard sweater DK base with uh, 240 meters per 100 grams and um, that's the one that the Fernand Moss cardigan is actually designed in and I've dyed actually quite a few colorways some of them you already know probably and some are new um, and also yeah please let me know if you like this kind of format for the color preview or if you prefer something different because yeah, I'm never sure how people like to see it and naturally dyed yarn is so difficult to photograph so sometimes I feel like a video might be more helpful but definitely please give me some feedback so I know if you like this kind of little preview thingy. Okay the first color I want to start out is this one. This is the colorway Mountain Rose and it's, I don't know if this way this is so blurry but it's supposed to be, hello? Could you just, yes, now you can see it. This is Mountain Rose and it appears a little bit less pinky in the um, screen here, but it's actually a little bit more dusty pink and this colorway has been around for quite a while and it's always a staple and I think it's so nice for garments because it's just very muted and it suits every kind of uh, hair color, skin tone, anything. And yeah, it's gonna be back uh, for the next update. Um, another favorite of yours that's going to be back, um, that has been very popular in the last two updates, is the colorway Caramel. This is a slightly reddish, yellowish brown that's actually... Um, hello, focus. Okay, this is... yes, now we're getting there. Um, it's a really nice... Um, variegated kind of brown with a little bit of reddish and yellowish undertones and um, this is the one that was available in uh, the kit um, of the Humlebee shawl that was designed by Fibre Tales that I did in collaboration with Fibre Tales and uh, Eva of the Blue Rabbit House and I remember it was kind of, you were kind of crazy um, completely setting us out for this um, colorway and yeah, it's gonna be back as a single skein or like without any kits or something in this update and I've actually dyed double the amount of last time because last time it was gone in a couple of minutes. So <laughs> I hope I will be able to, yeah, I dyed enough for so every one of you can get a skein if you want to. So the next colorway is uh, something new um, because, uh, yeah, I had my first um, bigger indigo dyeing experiments. Hold on a second, is this blurry? Now I'm, I seem to be back in focus, sorry. Um, but the next colorway is a new one because yeah, I've been dyeing on a little bit of a bigger scale with indigo for the first time, which is pretty damn magical. I don't know, many of my fellow natural dyers will know it's 
it's quite an experience because it's a lot of it's a lot of manual work and um, watching the oxidization of the indigo turning from a greenish murky tone to a to the yeah indigo blue that we all know and love it's pretty magical and I can see myself doing it quite a few more times in the next couple of months so yeah um, this is uh, the only indigo dyed colorway that's going to be available on the BFL Maxim DK and it's uh, yeah it's dyed on a gray brownish base which is why it gives this beautiful heathered effect and yeah it's quite a light indigo color but i feel like it's very wearable and also will go very well with all the other other, other colors that we've dyed um also a note on indigo dyed yarn i will also i'm right now i'm working on a little bit of an info sheet on the website and on like a little bit of a physical thing that i want to put into indigo dyed yarns um, if you order indigo dyed yarn, yeah, that's what I wanted to say because indigo is um, it works differently than other natural dyes and all my other dyes, so it does not completely adhere to the fiber in the way that other natural dyes do, which is why you can experience a little bit of the so called crocking, which is an effect that um, the pigment is lifted from the fiber a little bit once you put pressure on it, which obviously happens when you knit with it because yeah it's pressured by your fingers and needles so the colorways are all pretty light and i've done everything i can do to minimize the crocking as much as i can but um yeah it might happen that you have a little bit of a bluish stain on your fingers once you knit with it that's perfectly normal don't worry and um yeah as said watch out for my little indigo info that i'm gonna include in my website soon because there's also some info on aftercare of indigo dyed yarn to make sure it doesn't bleed out too much or anything. Okay, so much about... Oh, I just saw the three colors I already showed you just together. They look so nice. Look at these three together. Oh, I really love it. Okay. Next up, I'm trying to be a little bit quicker at this because we have a couple of colorways and I'm a bit afraid that it might take too long. <laughs> but um, the next colorway is a new one that still does not have a name. So if you have any uh, suggestions, it's this one. It's like a orange brown. Come on, focus. It's like an orange brown also dyed on the grayish base so it's a little bit heathered and also has a slight bit of variegation throughout. Um, it's a tad bit uh, more orange than the caramel colorway. These are the two next to each other. So yeah it's a bit more like a reminds me kind of carrot cake but I don't want to call all my yarns about food. <laughs> but it's um, yeah it's like a foxy orangey kind of brown and I really like it. Um, On to the greens. I've been dyeing um, some two green colorways, one of them being a good old trusty favorite called Sage. This is, it appears slightly darker on camera than it is in real life. I would say in real life it's a bit more light and not as blue toned. Um, but it's really hard to capture on camera. I don't know why that is, but this is actually the colorway that Anya designed her fern and moss cardigan in and it was the color of the original sample. So if you fancy something similar, um, this is the colorway for you. Oh, no, it looks really dark. It's not that dark. Come on. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. I'll make sure to also take some pictures where I'm trying to um, capture the color a little bit better but it's yeah it's a really nice green and it's really um, like kind of a grayish green so it's very wearable as well. Um, the other greenish colorway I have is this one that's called moss and oh no sorry this is not moss this is olive I'm sorry I'm getting really confused because I've also dyed a, 
um, some sock yarn um, for a collaboration that I'm going to tell you about in a similar colorway that's called Moss. But this one is called Olive and it's like a greenish yellowish kind of color that just reminds me of olives honestly and it's um, yeah I think again a very wearable color I think it could go really well with the other earthy shades like the carrot cake kind of one caramel and this one um, I think they would be really pretty and super autumnal um, yeah and it's yeah just another earthy shade that I really love Speaking of earthy shades, <laughs> I have another one um, that was quite popular in the last update as well and this is the colorway Almond and Almond is a little bit more on the grayish beigey side than the other brown colorways that are pretty red toned I would say and I can really imagine this one paired with a like a um, like a mohair color or something that would fit it and I think that would be really cool and classic and a minimalist kind of look and yeah, I really like this colorway I think it also goes really well with black which is why I'm actually considering um, making myself a sweater out of this one but yeah let's see this is almond and last but not least we have one more colorway on the BFM Massam DK that is, um, yeah, has been a classic almost for the last couple of updates as well. And this is Mulberry. It's a pretty deep red, purple, brownish color. It really shifts in the light between a reddish undertone and a little bit more of a brown. And I think it's so pretty. I really like this. It's also, again, as all of the BFM Massam colorways, it's dyed on this... Um, have that base so all of them have this really lovely depth plus the BFL in this um, gives a little bit of a luster as you can see the darker colors really have a little bit of a sheen so yeah this is Marbury and this is honestly one of the colors that I'm always thinking about oh I have to take some skeins for myself from the shop but I'm strong I'm not going to do it um, maybe in the winter let's see so I will be trying to take a couple of the colorways together just so you can see the whole collection uh, in all its glory. Um, but it will be difficult to hold it up, so... <laughs> so let's see how I can do this. So, whoops, these are the colorways all together. So yeah, I'm really happy with how they turned out. I think it's a really nice um, muted autumnal palette and um, yeah, I can't wait to see what you will pick from the colors. Um, yeah, that's it for the BFL Massam DK. As said, it's a 75% BFL, 25% Massam Sheep um, blend. That's of course, as all of my yarns, um, non super wash and plastic free so yeah it's a perfectly natural yarn and as said if any questions occur just let me know um yeah i think we will move on to the colorways that will be available on the bfm messam fall ply which is the fingering weight edition of the bfm messam um, dk so it's a 400 meter per 100 yeah 400 meter per 100 grams and yeah, it's just the same heathered dark, like light gray brown base, so it has the heathered effect as well. And yeah, let's jump right into showing you the colorways. Okay, on the BFM Essen 4 ply, we have um, two indigo dyed colorways. Um, one of them being pretty close to the one I showed you on the BFM Massam DK. And that is this one. It's a pretty light indigo again. Um, slightly darker than the one on the BFM Massam DK, but um, still pretty light. And 
I really love this one. I can imagine a, a, a shawl or something in this one. I think it also would be quite nice with my hair color. Okay. No, no, no. I'm going to. <laughs> I'm not going to take any for myself. Um, but that's the lighter indigo. And then we have a little bit of a darker indigo color. This one. And again, yeah, the crocking is um, something to keep in mind um, when you're knitting with indigo dyed yarn. But yeah, as said, it's nothing toxic or anything bad. Um, I just wanted to tell you that you're aware of it. And these are the two shades next to each other. This one is the light, lighter one that doesn't really appear lighter because the base is gray, but there's a little bit less indigo tone than in this one. And this one is a bit more true blue. Well, this is a bit more grayish blue. So, yeah, these are the indigo colors uh, together, and I think they would be absolutely stunning together with almond that I've also showed you on the BFMSM DK that we also have available on the Fort Ply base. If my camera wants to focus, hello. Um, here we go. So it's like a beigey tone again, and I think these three would be really pretty together. I don't know what you think, but yeah, I could really imagine those together. And another uh, really nice and earthy tone that we've dyed is this one. It doesn't have a name, and I don't know if it's going to be recreatable. So it's probably going to stay in one of a kind colorway, but it's this one and it's pretty similar to Almond, just with a tiny bit more of a reddish undertone. So I don't know if my camera will pick it up, but yeah, the, this one is Almond and the other one is the new colorway that's a bit more reddish in undertone. Um, so yeah, these are the earthy tones on the BFM Asim Fault Ply. And we also have two greens again. Um, this one is the colorway Burn. It's actually quite a bright green um, with a bit of a yellowish tone. And then we have one of my favorites actually that's called um, Artichoke. And it's a very grayish soft kind of green. Um, actually, my mom is knitting a shawl out of this um, this colorway on the BFMSM DK base right now, and it's so glorious. I'll have to show you in an episode if she lets me, but yeah, it's just really nice. And I think these two, it's nice because the um, fern is a bit more punchy, and then the artichoke can really counteract that colorway a little bit, and I just love that. Um, yeah, we have a little bit less colorways on the BFMSM fall ply just because, yeah, I didn't have as much yarn of this base. So um, yeah, make sure to grab that one first if you if you fancy some fingering weight yarn. Um, it can, by the way, also be held double very well, and um, it's also nice to knit that one on a little bit more of an open gauge. Um, I did that with my plim shawl by Melody Hoffman that I used to uh, wear in one of my previous episodes. But it's, um, yeah, as I said, it's just really wearable. And um, when you put, like, um, I knitted this one, I guess, on 3.75 needles. So if the gauge is a bit more open, then the shawl just really flows around your neck and it's really nice. And yeah, that way you also need just very little yarn. I think I used two skeins of the BFM Massim for quite a big shawl, so, um, oh, of the four ply, I'm sorry. So, yeah, definitely recommend checking that out. And again, if you need any pattern recommendations or something for that yarn, just let me know. Um, next up is going to be the longest section of this little preview because, um, yeah, I've dyed quite a bit of sock yarn. This whole uh, update will be pretty much about sock yarn <laughs> and uh, it's the biggest portion I dyed. So 
bear with me if this section takes a little bit longer to record um, but I'm trying to go through it pretty quickly and also some of the colorways don't have a name yet so if you come up with something that you really like just let me know yeah so I can yeah maybe find names by the way this is one of the things that's really difficult for me finding colorway names I'm just really bad at it I don't know why um, but it's just not my favorite so let's start with the first colorway this is one that's also one of a kind colorway because yeah with indigo dyed yarn it's, it's difficult to recreate things um, just because yeah it's not as um, you cannot be as precise as you can be with other natural dyes so um, yeah these are probably going to come through the shop this time and not again so maybe similar but not in the same way um, but this is something that really intrigues me it's pretty out there and <laughs> I don't know if I mean I'm a person that likes muted subtle tones but I'm kind of liking this one it's this one it's the colorway emerald um, and it's a really punchy green that just screams maybe Halloween to me or something I don't know but it's um yeah it's just a really punchy green and it has been dyed with like a yellow first and then has been over dyed with indigo so that's why um, it has this really punchy green I don't know if you can see but yeah the other I have two more um, indigo dyed skeins in the sock base by the way the sock base is my regular Corridale sock it's a 400 meter per hundred gram um, yarn that's actually 100% uh, Corridale with a little bit of a higher twist um, just so the sock yarn is a bit sturdier and holds up well on your feet so yeah that's um, the makeup of the yarn um, and if you want any recommendations about um, like knitting with plastic free sock yarns let me know because I know this is a whole different story and I should maybe dedicate a whole episode to that one day but uh, not today but yeah I know that some people have different experiences with it so if you're curious at, at how this base knits up and holds up um, I'm happy to share so um, the two indigo dyed colorways are these two there is a lighter one and a darker one again, like we had with the BFM Mass and Fault Ply. And um, I think actually these are really pretty. They remind me of little blue jewels or something. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know. This, the video was just not recording anymore. But um, I was just saying that these remind me of little blue jewels. And this yarn really has a nice sheen again that makes the color really pop on it so yeah this is gonna be the indigo one I think I called it and indigo two on the Corydale sock base um on to some other of the solid colors I'm showing you the solid colors first then the variegated ones and then the sock sets which I know you're all happy about whenever I have them so hope you'll like those um, the next colorway is a new one that does not have a name yet, so feel free to let any uh, recommendations below. This is this one, and it's a slightly muted grey brownish pink. A tiny bit like the Mountain Rose colorway on the BFM Massum, but it's more beige and a little bit warmer in undertone, I would say. So. Um, if you will come up with any colorway name for this one, let me know. Um, also, it has a slight variegation, which I like quite a lot. Um, and I think it would go really well with the next one that is a new colorway as well. And I think I've dyed this one once on my first limited edition yarn. And it's the colorway Dove. And this is a really light super light purple gray that I think is the perfect neutral to pair with any other color especially with this one I really like this combo 
really has very dusty vintage vibes I think <laughs> and yeah that one is called Dove and yeah then we have one more uh, solid colorway in the Corridale sock base and that one has no name either um, but it's screaming Halloween to me and even though I'm not really into celebrating Halloween or anything I had to admit that this one screams it so this one it's a tiny bit more red in the camera I would say in a natural light it's a little bit more orange um, I don't know if you can see it like this, but it's really punchy and I think it's really bright and it would make a great pair of Halloween socks if you're into that, so... Yeah, those were the solid colored ones. Um, On to the multicolored ones, which I'm pretty pleased with this time. Um, I will have some sock sets, as I said as well, but I think the... Um, Multicolored ones uh, this time are really the ones that stand out the most because, yeah, I don't know. I personally like them so much. Um, the first one is the most subtle and soft one. It's this one. And it doesn't really have a name yet. It kind of reminds me of something garden flower related. So, um, yeah, has a light lilac purple. Then some white and some of those darker grey blue specks. Um, and I think it would knit up very nicely. By the way, all the colorways that I have with the white speckled part, um, they are dyed in a way that they knit up almost self striping. Like they don't have a lot of color pooling, but they are distributing the different colors quite well over the sock. Which is always something that I kind of find annoying whenever I have some hand dyed yarn and I knit a sock out of it and then there's one big splotch of color somewhere and nothing else <laughs> on the rest of the sock. So these ones are all dyed in a way that they will distribute the two colors that are, in, or two main colors that are into this one, they will distribute it over the whole sock. So um, same goes for the next colorway that is. This one, and I actually have a name for it already. It's a bit more orangey and punchy in the camera. It's a slight bit more muted um, in real life. And I decided to call this one um, Harvest because it just reminds me of um, picking apples and uh, harvesting fruit. And this, there goes some credits to Lacquer of Fiber Tales, who actually pointed me into the direction of apples with this colorway. So, thanks to Lacquer, this one is called Harvest. Um, the next one is really autumnal again, um, and I don't have a name for this one either. I only have a direction it points me towards, but. It's this one and I think this screams cozy evenings by a fireplace somehow. Um, yeah, it's really, this dark color here is really something in between a reddish brown berry tone and with the contrast of the reddish undertone I think it's just really autumnal. And this might even be my favorite of the collection, I don't know, but yeah, I will have a hard time not keeping one for myself. Um, but yeah, I'm getting kind of cozy cabin um, fireplace vibes with this one, so let me know if you have any name suggestions for this one. Um, the next one goes into a completely different uh, direction, it's not as autumnal, but very out there again as well. Um, it's this colorway, and this has been dyed with a little bit of indigo as well, so be keep in mind that it might crock off a little bit, but it's. I decided to call this one sea glass because it just reminds me of sea glass with all the different um, nuances in of green and blue in this one so 
yeah, this one is sea glass and um, yeah, with that being said, we're already at the last of the variegated colorways, um, which is one that still does not, not have a name either. I feel like I'm so bad at this, but I still have a weekend ahead before the shop update so I can <laughs> brainstorm a bit more about the names. Or maybe you'll have some great suggestions, I don't know. But this is the last one. And it's very, again, quite punchy um, with a dark grape purple and some reddish rusty speckles and some white in it and yeah this one is kind of Halloweeny as well I think I don't know if you agree but I feel like the whole dark purple vibe is giving me a little bit of a Halloween feel come on focus oh, here we go yeah but I had a lot of fun experimenting with new techniques on how to dye more variegated colors as I thought or yeah I just realized you seem to really like them so uh, yeah that's why I tried to experiment more and I'm pretty pleased with the results so far um, yeah. and I'm ho I hope you will be too. <laughs> um, Next up are the sock sets and I, th I don't know if you remember but last time I had a little bit of a uh, theme going on with all the like flowers that I had. Um, so all the sock sets were inspired by different flower types and this time we have another collection. Um, I really was craving a little bit of a like a vintagey muted vibe and um, what actually gave me the push to find the theme for the uh, collection was my mom who suggested uh, doing a Downton Abbey collection and I absolutely love the series, she loves the series and I feel like it has such a cozy vibe that just, just fits knitting a lot so I thought why not do a Downton Abbey collection and so yeah there will be six stock sets um, in colorways uh, inspired by six of the female characters of the series and um, they are all on my Corydale sock base with a main skein of 100 grams and then a 20 gram mini that um, can be used for contrasting heels, cuffs and toes. Um, the sock sets are all tied together with, with recycled linen um, just so to reduce waste and be as sustainable as we can um, because I mean you've probably been around for a while and know that but I'm all about sustainability and reusing things and not creating any unnecessary waste um, but yeah so you will have 120 grams of the um, of the sock sets and yeah they're all pretty soft and I think they're a nice counterpart to the bit more punchy um, variegated colored skeins so yeah, let's jump right into the colorways. Okay, on to the Downton Abbey colorways. So, um, yeah, I'm still not sure if I want to include the royal title of each character, or if I just want to call it by the first name. But, um, yeah, I'll just go for it and tell you who inspired. Um, each success. So this is the first one and this is called, called Rose or Lady Rose depending on how I decide to do it and uh, this is a soft very soft light pinkish color and like a dusty pink brown mini with it and it's pretty soft and neutral and I think it's very wearable and yeah it was inspired by Lady Rose then we have the next one that is this one and uh, it's a bit more beigey in undertone and it has a couple of peachy parts of it with a green little mini and this one was inspired by oh come on focus and this one is called or inspired by Gwen 
because of the peachy flex remind me of her hair a little bit <laughs> um, then we have the next one like this this it's a little bit it's like a beige peach and a white with some yellow speckles and light mint green mini and this one is called Edith and then we have two more one of them being probably my favorite of the collection I like this one so much because it's just yeah I like the colors and the character is just really uh, yeah I just loved watching the series because of her and that goes a little shout out to Miss Maggie Smith and this one is Lady Violet which I think is just so nice it has little flecks of two different purples and some green and it's a bit more out there than the other colorways which is pretty much resembling Lady Violet's personality I think I think it was Eva of the Blue Rabbit House who helped me name these and she just said it fits so well because this is the most outstanding of the collection and you really can't ignore Lady Violet when she enters the room and I found that so fitting so <laughs> that's a pretty cool way of calling or naming this uh, colorway I think so yeah that is that one so there are two more colorways in this collection and one of them is this one And this is called Sybil, or Lady Sybil, I don't know yet, but let's see. It's a bit more, it has a, like a beigey undertone and then it, these flecks look a little bit more pinkish in camera, but it's pretty close to this uh, mini color. So yeah, the mini color is a little bit like the mulberry color on the BFMSM. So yeah, just very autumnal and very toned. So I love that one. And last but not least, we have uh, Mrs. Patmore. And this is again a beigey color with white and some light purple gray mini that I think is just really nice. So I don't think I will be able to hold them all up uh, next to each other, but I will show um, like a little bit of an overview on the sock sets on Instagram and Yeah, I think that is it for this little preview episode um, I hope it wasn't too long. I know there are a lot of colorways for this update So I'm trying to keep it a little bit shorter next time um, But anyways, let me know if you like these kind of little preview vlog video kind of things and yeah as I said, I'm available all weekend if you need any info on anything for the shop update and I hope you will like some of the colorways we dyed and um, yeah, let me know what you think about all this. Next time I'm planning to do a little bit more knitting content again, but honestly the last couple of months were pretty busy and I didn't have a lot of time to knit, but I've knitted one very special object that I'm going to share in the next episode. So um stay tuned for that and yeah i'm really happy to be back to recording because i really felt like i was a bit quiet over the summer months but yeah now with all the exciting stuff going on and the new time i have uh, for will and twine i guess there will be a lot more episodes so stay tuned and let me know what you think about the little preview section and i hope you're safe and uh yeah, can't wait to chat to you again soon. Bye-bye.